Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Rohr. I'm from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, presenting for uh, um, Case Medical Center. Uh, we have no, nothing to disclose and no conf conflict of interest. So uh, good afternoon to the, to the moderators and uh, to the members of SAGES, and thank you very much for allowing us this opportunity to present um, staple line buttressing in laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. What is the evidence? So gastric bypass surgery is, by definition, a high-risk procedure um, due to the nature of its population. The risk of bleeding and leak can be devastating and even lethal. Staple line buttressing has become of interest to many surgeons in the field and is used by many surgeons. Our interest was to perform a systematic review of the literature to determine what exactly is the evidence for the use of this buttressing material. We performed a systematic review of the literature using the PubMed database where we used the keywords laparoscopic gastric bypass and complication, which gave us 357 publications. These were then limited to those in English that addressed adult humans in the last 10 years and gave us 237 publications. These were then reduced down to 21 publications using our exclusion criteria, which included reviews, revision, duplicate articles, as well as uh, excluding those articles that did not focus on gastric bypass and its complication, for example, articles that discussed sleeve gastrectomy or were more based on the nutritional aspects of the gastric bypass. Our results then gave us 21 publications, of which five were, ran were um, comparative studies comparing buttressed to non-buttressed patients head-to-head. -head. Of these, only three were randomized control trials. There were two non-randomized control and retrospective trials. And there were 16 total non-comparative studies, which, of which five were buttressed patients only, and the other 11 were non-buttressed patients only. From our results, the level one evidence gave us three randomized control trials only. And as we can see, Dr. Wynn's study here shows us that there were there was a significant decrease in blood loss, estimated blood loss, EBL, from 129 to 84 milliliters. There was also one significant bleed in the non-buttress group compared to the buttress group, and this patient had to go back to the OR. The other two studies did not uh, document, um, oh, sorry, did not document blood loss. However, they used a surrogate as to how many clips they needed to control bleeding. And we can see that the non-buttress group required significantly more clips to control bleeding than the, non, than the buttress group. In addition, both of these authors documented a decrease in OR time from the non-buttress to the buttress group and suggested that this decrease in OR time was in part contributed to by the decrease in bleeding. From the comparative studies, as a whole, we see also that Saber and his colleagues here, they did not document a significant decrease in blood loss, but they did document a significant need for increased suturing of the staple line to decrease bleeding, which was 15% higher in the non-buttress group than in the buttress group. They did not have a significant uh, change in OR time. None of those first four studies documented any leak. However, Shakora in 2003, in a retrospective um, comparative study did document two significant leaks in the non-buttressed group. These leaks, these patients did have to go back to the OR twice each and uniquely as most studies in gastric bypass document leaks at the GJ site, the gastrojejunostomy, these leaks were both at the staple line, the proximal staple line, one was on the gastric remnant and one was on the gastric pouch. Of the non-comparative series without buttressing, we see that the bleed rate is, oh, sorry again, is approximately 2.3% and a leak rate of 1%. This is without buttressing. <laughs> With buttressing, again, in the non-comparative studies, we see a similar bleed rate of 2.3% and a slightly decreased leak rate of 0.6%. So in summary, the level one evidence, although limited, finds that Bleeding and leak are both decreased with buttressing 
OR time is also decreased with buttressing, and there was one significant bleed that required take back to the OR. In the non-randomized comparative studies, they also documented significant decrease in both bleeding and leak. And in the non-comparative series, there was no significant difference in bleeding. However, there was a suggestion that leak may be increased when not using buttressing. In conclusion, staple line buttressing decreases the risk of, of bleeding and leak. Even with this limited evidence, the complication of bleeding and leak can be so devastating in this population that even with this limited evidence, enough for most of the surgeons would invest in extra expense of using the buttressing material. Lastly, a well-designed large randomized control trial is needed to further clarify the importance of staple line buttressing in laparoscopic gastric bypass. Thank you. Questions from the audience? Um, I, I'll start out with a question here. So, I was under the impression from the abstract that you didn't think there was a significant benefit from buttressing, yet your conclusion says there was a decrease in bleeding and, so, and leak rates. So, as you can see from the evidence, the level one evidence mm -hmm. is weak in the sense that it's based on more so subjective information in that the, the bleeding increase in bleeding was based on increased use of clips and not actual blood loss. However, in the end, the end result of having one patient that needs to go back to the OR for significant bleeding or two patients that need to go back to the OR for significant leak suggests that, clinically speaking, it favors the use of buttressing material. Okay. So before we go to the, the question over here, I need you to announce whether you have anything to disclose or not. I have no disclosure, no. Okay. Microphone. Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing to disclose either. Um, <laughs> Good. I, I'd have to say the only one of your conclusions I agree with is number three, that we probably need a randomized prospective trial to, to, to finally answer this question once and for all because uh, we don't know what staplers you were using. We don't know who, was, who were doing any of these cases. I can't imagine that, that bleeding from staple lines can take over an hour to control it just seems, the numbers seem unbelievable based on my experience. I'm just a small country surgeon, you sure. know, working in a private hospital. But um, never have I had to take anyone back. And, and, you know, maybe I use one clip every couple of months to control bleeding from a staple line. Maybe I'm using different staplers than these guys. I think there's just too many variables. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that. I totally agree. I think there are many variables, including, for example, the use of DVT prophylaxis. How many of these patients had heparin and how many didn't preoperatively? I looked into that and DVT prophylaxis was documented in most of the procedures where they did not use buttressing material. However, not at all in the procedures where they use buttressing material. Regardless, there was no difference in, in bleeding with respect to buttressing or not using heparin or, or not preoperatively or, or Lovenox, whatever. There are many factors as you suggest and the evidence is very limited and that's what I'm trying to show here is that level one evidence is limited and I think the use of buttressing material is probably surgeon dependent. So case is a huge place with lots of influence, so put a multi-center trial together and answer this in like two years for us. Dr. Richards. Yeah, Bill Richards from Mobile, Alabama. Uh, here's, the, here's the problem for surgery. If you look at any of the drug trials, they'll have 5,000, 10,000 patients in each group, Right. okay? Looking at the difference that you've already shown in all the literature, you're talking about a difference of, you know, 0.6 to 0.8 or, you know, very small differences. So you're going to have to get, again, thousands of patients randomized, exactly. okay, to get this, okay? Here's where we need to hit our manufacturers hard. They need to start stepping up and funding surgical studies to answer just these very questions instead of putting all their money in the marketing. That's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we saw part of that. Now, I'm not a representative of Allegan, but Allegan did present, you know, and fund a study. But we have to step up and ask 
U.S. Surgical, Covidian, Ethicon, all of the other manufacturers to step up and do more of these clinical studies. I totally agree. Brief question over here. Yeah, uh, Pando Yenamala from Lansing, Michigan. Looking at the study, to make a big statement like you need to use the buttressing material for every single case, I think in a national meeting like this, without evidence, coming to that conclusion, that is, uh, that is not acceptable. All right, thank you very much.